Friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this PyScript tutorial, we are going to learn how to use SQL Lite in your PyScript web application. For that, what we are going to do is first we are going to read a CSV file using pandas. Then we are going to convert that CSV into a SQL table. Then we are going to read the SQL table and then finally we are going to print something like an output. So to quickly show you what we are going to do. As you can see, this is actually read from the internet as a CSV table and then that CSV is converted into a SQL light table and that SQL light table is finally read using select star and then you finally get to see the shape and then the total count of the CSV. So this is quite simple, uh, but this example is quite simple because I wanted to keep the scope of the video very limited. But the idea is how you can interchangeably communicate between pandas and SQL light and also how you can even deal with SQL light in the first place. Because a lot of people do not know that um, the, the engine that powers PyScript, which is called Pyodite, Pyodite supports SQL Lite, which means you have the ability to create SQL tables and then read SQL tables within your browser. And all of the things that we are talking about is within the browser, as you can see right now, it is on my local host. So that is what we are going to learn. If you are fam not familiar with PyScript, I would strongly recommend you to go through my other tutorials about how to get started with PyScript, very basic information. That should give you some idea about what we are going to do here as well if you if you are not familiar but otherwise this video should itself be standalone fine so first thing is um, i have got a file simple file html file it says pandas underscore sqlite.html so this is a very simple html file and as with any html i've got an html open and close tag and then i've got a head tag and within my head tag i've got a title tag and within my title i've got title saying read csv with pandas using pyscript and also the two important components that we have to always load. We have got the PyScript.css and then we have got PyScript.js. So we have loaded these two. Now is the part where we are going to define what, what is the environment, what kind of things that we need, the dependency management or environment management. We have to tell PyScript that I want pandas. You don't have to mention SQLite. SQLite is already available, so you don't have to ask PyScript to install SQLite separately for you but rather for pandas or if you are going to use matplotlib if you are going to use numpy you need to mention it here within pyenv so within pyenv py-env you have to mention the libraries that you want in our case we are going to simply deal with pandas so i'm going to say i want pandas here at this point you have got most of the dependencies sorted out so we are going to close our head so you can see when we close our head we are entering the body so next after inside our body, I'm going to have a very simple h1 tag just to say what is this. I'm saying read CSV with pandas using PyScript. So that, that's just as simple as that, nothing more than that. Then I'm giving a placeholder. So if I refresh this, you would not see anything here because I've got a placeholder called CSV, which is just a place for me to write the output um, data frame, the CSV file. That's it. So right now at the start of the video, you would at the start of the application, you would not see anything. The reason is because we have uh, we have this locked we have a placeholder there where we are going to ideally find ideally write the output so this is a placeholder for example if you're going to have an upload button then that place would be empty until you do the upload and then click an action so if, if you if you are not familiar with how to include an upload button i've got a separate video for that you should definitely check it out that uses panel it's quite simpler than what what i'm going to show you uh, but in this case, we are not going to locally upload the CSV rather we would read the CSV from uh, some other cloud provider or some some other place on the internet. So right now we are going to read CSV using a URL. But if you want to read CSV from your local machine, like you want to upload it, then you have to probably refer that video and then refer the remaining part of this video. So that's something that you need to check out. But just for your understanding, this is a simple placeholder with an ID called CSV. That is where we are going to ideally write our output. Now at this point, our front end component is done. So we have an H1 tag, which is heading one. The second is we have a placeholder, a paragraph tag, where we are going to write the output. So now our front end component is done, like you, as you can see. So what do we want next? Now is the main important part, the core engine, like you can consider it to be backend. You can consider it to be the JavaScript equivalent, whatever you would like to call it. So this is the place we are going to write our Python code. So what are we going to do as with any Python code? First thing that we are going to do is we are going to import the required libraries. 
First, we need pandas for tabular data manipulation. In this case, we are going to use pandas to read the file, uh, read the CSV, and also to again convert the SQL content to pandas. So we are going to use pandas and SQLite here and there. Then we need to create a database and we need to create a database connection. So we're going to use SQLite. So for that, so import pandas as PD, PD is our alias here. Import SQLite 3 as SQL, SQL is our alias here. I mean, yeah, uh, just, just, I, I am used to saying this as SQL. You can call it SQL or whatever it is. I'm sorry if, um, if you call it differently. So I'm going to just address this as SQL in the rest of the video. SQL in short stands for a structured query language, which is usually like, which is quite popular in the RDBMS world. RDBMS stands for relational database management system, like Oracle and all, all the other system. So SQL is quite popular if you're going to ever use tabular data in data science environment. Also, a lot of web applications tend to store their data as uh, a SQL Lite, uh, which is the lighter version, like a database management system. So that is that is entirely the reason why we are uh, doing this video. So next is uh, for you to read content from a URL, it's not very easy to do it directly. Like unlike your pandas read underscore URL, which you cannot do here. So you you need you need a pyodide um, bridge there. So we are going to use pyodide.http to open the URL. Traditionally, what you would do is you would use request package and then you would try to read the content from using request package. But right now, request package is not supported by Pyodide. So you are there is a hack. You're going to use Pyodide.http and open the URL to read the content of the URL. This might change in the near future or future because I've read a couple of uh, comments from PyScript community that they are actually working on something where they want to provide an alternative or lighter version of request to do get and post request. But right now, as I'm recording this video on 11th June, this stands true where uh, this is the way we have to read content from a web URL. And then we are going to read the pandas content like the CSV from it. So at this point, we have successfully read three Python libraries that we want to proceed further. The next thing is we need to read the CSV using pandas. So we have a CSV file on the internet, like somewhere diamonds.csv quite popular. Most of you might have already heard about it. Now I'm going to simply say open underscore URL and read the content. And now this content is given inside read underscore CSV. So traditionally, if you had request package, all you have to do is PD dot read underscore CSV and you can give the URL there. But uh, because we do not have request package right now, we cannot do that. So that's why first step, we are reading the URL content using open underscore URL from pyodide.http. Then we are going to do read underscore CSV and then assign that output into diamonds. So as you know, diamonds is a pandas data frame. So what is the object type of diamonds? Diamonds is a pandas data frame. At this point, you have successfully read CSV file and then converted into a pandas data frame and then stored it as a pandas data frame. That's, that's where the code currently stays. Now, what do you want to do now next? So the next thing is we want to take this pandas data frame, right? So we, we had CSV, we read it as a pandas data frame. Now we want to take this pandas data frame and then save it as a SQL like table so that we can write SQL queries on it. So that's what our next step is. Our next step is to convert this pandas data frame into a SQL like table. And that is exactly what we are going to do now. We're going to say SQL.connect and then we are going to create this table. We are going to create a connection with diamonds.db. At this point, diamonds.db does not exist. So that's something for you to keep in mind. If you already had a DB, then that's an entirely different topic altogether. But in this case, diamonds.db does not exist. So we have created a connection and we are saying that, you know, this pandas data frame diamonds dot to SQL. So we're converting this pandas data frame into a SQL and writing it in this connection, which is what the connection is. So this is the part where we are converting the pandas data frame into a SQL like table. So at this point, what has happened is we have a table name called diamonds, right? So it is a temporary storage, which is persistent only within the browser. It's not in cloud. It's not anywhere else. So it, this is like only persistent for your current session. So at this point, we have successfully created a table, a SQL like table called diamonds. So now if you are familiar with SQL, all you have to do is select star from diamonds to read the content from diamonds table. Now that's exactly what we are going to do next. I'm going to show you how to read content from a SQL light table, which we just created in fact. So now we are going to read SQL into a pandas data frame. 
So instead of keeping the SQL content as just SQL, I mean, of course, um, this is at the end of the day, yeah, tabular data. So I'm saying select star from diamonds. Diamonds is a table name, right? You, uh, I mean, if you're familiar with SQL, you also know that this is case insensitive. So you can write select, you can write select whatever you want, like uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. I'm limiting it to 20 rows. The reason why I'm limiting it to 20 rows is for me to actually show you that the code works. So see, select star from diamonds, the table name, and limit 20 means it's almost like head in your pandas data frame. You're limiting the number of rows to 20 and then using the connection con. So this is the connection. This is the table name that you just wrote and then you're reading it. Not just reading it, you're actually reading it into a pandas data frame again and that data frame object name is called df. Now, okay, like, uh, like whatever we wanted to achieve is done. We, we successfully read a CSV converted into a pandas data frame, right? Read a CSV converted into a pandas data frame, took the pandas data frame and created a SQL light table. Now read from the pandas, uh, C is SQL light table and then stored it inside a pandas data frame. Now all we have to do is find a place to write the pandas data frame back. So now we already learned at the start of the video that we have kept a placeholder called CSV where we are going to finally write the content of DF. So now what is this DF? This DF is basically what you are extracting from the SQL. So if it is five, DS could be five rows. If it is 10, DS could be 10 rows. So it depends upon what is your limit and you could see. And we are writing the entire data frame and also we are writing the shape of the data frame, which is the pandas data frame. It's going to give you number of rows and number of columns. The reason why I'm writing shape is just to tell you to, so that I can show you that the SQL query works. So when I do limit five here, ideally you should see number of rows as five here. When I do limit 10 here, you would ideally see number of uh, rows 10. So at this point, our code is complete. So we, we have successfully managed to do everything. I'm going to save the code. At this point, I saved the code. Go back here. So because I saved it, it is running. When it runs, you would see that it is going to show you 20, 20 rows, uh, ideally 20 rows, uh, and then it's going to write. So you can see 19, 20. So because it starts from zero index, of course, we run Python. Then it shows 20, 11, 11 columns, 20 rows. If I come back and change the SQL query to say that, you know what, my um, I, I want only five, no seven, why, why not seven? Now, ideally, it should show you only seven rows, seven data points, seven observations, and then it should so show you seven comma eleven because you have seven rows and eleven columns. So let's see. Maybe then we can try to write some kind of um, SQL query. Um, let's see. Let's see how it works. But right now, you can see you are actually seeing it in real time. Uh, most likely, I'm not going to edit this video. Like I'm not going to clip the runtime. So so you can see how much time it's going to take. And once you click. Once you right click and then do inspect element, you would actually see that it is installing the library. It is reading from URL and all those things. So you can see it said seven, zero, one, two, three to six, and then seven, and then you could, you could see. Now, if you want just to see, um, let's say you've got index uh, and then you've got carrot and you've got cut. So for example, you have got color, right? So if you want to see what is the average price of color, maybe, maybe, um, Carrot, right? This is index carrot. Cut. So if you want to see cut and then average price, let's write a SQL query there. I can say, I can say select cut. Cut is what we want to cut. Average price as AVG price and group by group by one. Okay, so I'm I'm basically saying, give me average price based on cut. Okay, I'm not sorting or anything. Let's see if it works out. So um, I, I, I didn't try this out before, so I'm just trying my luck. Uh, let me see if my SQL query is correct. Select cut average price as average price from diamonds group by one. And this is my connection. So technically it should work. So let's wait uh, for a few seconds that it is loading because it's installing the component. So every, like I said, every time this entire thing is happening, like read the CSV, store the pandas data frame, convert the pandas data frame into a SQL light table and then read from the SQL light. So this is the entire thing is happening. Ideally, you wouldn't create your production application or your application like this because the reason I am doing it like this because I wanted to show you the capability, but uh, you know, in your case, you might have a form and then you might take the content, store it into a SQL light table. So you, you, you might have a totally different use case. But um, but for, for just for the demo purpose, 
have written a SQL query with a group by comment. And uh, let's see if it is going to ideally show up any result. Oh, it worked fine. So we have got fair, uh, sorry, cut fair, good, ideal, premium, very good. And you have got the average price. We have, of course, we have not sorted out the average price or anything. But you can see that our SQL query with the group by comment, group by clause, whatever it's called in SQL, it worked. And then we have got our output is five rows and two columns, column number one, column number two average. So which means we have successfully managed to create a PyScript web application, which is again completely client based, not a server based one, where we have read Panda CSV, converted into, sorry, we have read a CSV from the internet, converted into a Panda's data frame, created a SQLite table, read from the SQLite table using SQL, and then converted back to Panda's data frame, and then finally wrote that output and meta information on the front end of the web application. So I think this is where we should end this video. I hope this video was helpful to you in uh, in understanding how to use SQL Lite inside your PyScript web application and also how to transfer your objects between SQL Lite and Pandas. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, I hope you stay safe. Happy coding and peace.